Hello everybody, my name is Brandon. Welcome back to Cinefessions where we talk all things media. So I'm here today with part three of my 2021 retrospective series. So this is where I'm looking back at all of the different media that I consumed last year and uh, while well, I had been doing top 10 lists, but today I'm doing something a little bit different. I'm actually going to do a tier maker list here for all of the games that I ended up playing in 2021. So these are games that I ended up playing for a notable amount of time, like long enough that I feel that I can, you know, talk about them a little bit and give them a, a you know, a good place on this list based on the time spent with them. Um, you know, thanks to like, you know, Game Pass, things like that, I played probably three times as many games, but a lot of them I'll start them and then I'll play them for like, you know, 15, 20 minutes, even up to an hour in some cases, and then I'll just never go back to them. So what you're going to see that's uh, listed on this uh, tier list here are the games that I came back to at least, you know, a few times, put some time into them. Now, I didn't beat all of them necessarily, but I did, did beat some of them, uh, but others I just played enough where I have like a, a good idea of where they should fall onto this tier ranking list. So uh, yeah, hopefully you guys are excited about this. I don't talk video games too terribly much outside of like pickups, so something a little different and uh, we'll see how things go. So if you guys do enjoy this video, please give it a like down below. That really does help me out. But with that said, let's not waste any more time at all. Let's dive right in to tier ranking all of the video games that I played in 2021. So today's video will be a little bit different because it'll probably see less editing because I'm gonna kind of do this off the cuff. I have my uh, laptop down here in front of me. Hopefully you guys can see my screen as well as long as everything has gone according to plan. Uh, so if I'm looking down, that's why I'm just checking out my laptop screen. Um, but I do have, I think like seven different tiers. So I wanna talk about those a little bit. Uh, basically the very top tier is I just put an all timer. So this is just a fantastic video game like, you know, might be one of my all-time favorites now, maybe not, just, you know, one of my favorites of the year, whatever the case is, but it's an all-timer for me. And then it was just a great experience. So another really, you know, top-tier video game that I had a great time with. Um, and then a solid game. These are like, you know, solid 7 out of 10, 6 out of 10. These are good games, um, but they're not going to be the cream of the crop. Um, and then you have middle of the road. This is pretty self-explanatory. This is right in the middle of things here. Not great, not bad, just kind of there. Um, and then you have Forgettable. So games that were just a little bit worse than the middle of the road there. So yeah, they're just a little bit forgettable. Um, and then a uh, drag to play. Games that I just, man, I didn't like coming back to it. It was just a drag. And then finally, just plain terrible. So I think that one is pretty self-explanatory. I'll be honest, like most of the games probably aren't going to fall into those two bottom tiers just because if I came back to them, I wanted to come back to them. So we'll see where, where things take us here. But um, overall, I ended up playing, uh, putting time enough time into 20 different games last year. Um, and so, yeah, we're going to talk about all of these. You will see that the majority of these are Xbox games, and most of them are probably playable on Xbox Game Pass because... I went nuts with Game Pass last year. Like I didn't really play a ton of physical games. I played mostly digital games off of Game Pass, to be honest. And so it just, it is what it is. So yeah, that's the tier, tier maker list that I came up with. So let's uh, start with the first one here and go from there. I guess we'll just go in alphabetical order because that's the order that they were loaded in here. So the first one is Animal Crossing New Horizons on the Nintendo Switch. So this is a game that I have owned since like Christmas of 2019, I guess it was. When did this one come out? No, Christmas of 2020 because I think it came out in uh, 2020. But I'd never gotten around to it until uh, probably late last year. I think it was like October or November when I actually started playing this one. And uh, I was addicted when I played it. Like I used to love Animal Crossings on the GameCube. My sister and I used to play that. Um, the, D the DS version is the one that I probably played the most. Um, and then I really hadn't done too much with it since then um, until finally this Switch version came out. And I just rave reviews across the board like and and for good reason there's just so much more to do in this one than in the other uh animal crossings uh this is basically like a life simulator game um but it's not like the sims where you have to like do day-to-day -day, like you know going to the restroom taking a shower going to work things like that um but basically like what i used to do with it or what i've done in it is basically every morning i start the game and i go and i pick up all like the the sh shake the fruit off the trees and uh gather all the seashells see if there's any um 
things buried in the ground, fossils. I go and uh, sell all those and then, you know, earn that money to try to pay off your ho my house. Um, this was the first time where I feel like I grinded, if you want to call it that, more than any of these other games. And so my bank is just like stacked. Now, I'll be honest, ever since like December, I guess it was, where maybe it was Maybe I started this in September. I, I don't remember, I guess. But either way, uh, once I got my PS5 rolling, I kind of put this one to the back burner. I just haven't gone back to it yet this year. Um, so I do need, I do want to get back to it. But I know like it's just going to be one of those things where it like makes you feel bad when you go back to it because uh, in the old games there used to be weeds everywhere. I don't know if that happens in this one or not. So uh, either way though, like this is an awesome game. Like it's for a particular person. And if you're not that person that likes the Animal Crossing games, like you're not going to get anything out of this. But there's just so much more to do here than the old ones. So for my money, I mean, like, oh, my gosh, <laughs> this is already difficult. I think I'm going to put this in one of these top two tiers here. I'm going to have to go with uh, I, I don't think about it too hard, Brandon. Just pick somewhere. I'm going to put it in with a great experience like it is probably the best Animal Crossing game I've ever played. Not probably. It is the best Animal Crossing game I've ever played. Um, and so I'm going to end up putting it in great experience for me. Uh, it had, so, you know what? No, that's wrong. It is, it's an all-timer. Like it's just the best of the best when it comes to this style of game. And I put probably more hours into this one than maybe any other game outside of sports games um, in 2020. So like, or 2021, excuse me. Uh, and so, yeah, this is just, it's an all-timer. That's right. I'm, I'm keeping it at all-timer. So next one on the list here is Astro's Playroom. So my first PS5 title. And uh, this is one that I ended up, uh, that comes like free uh, when you get your PlayStation 5. Um, and it's really a tech demo more than anything, but it's also a love letter to Sony, to the PlayStation from across the years. Um, you are playing as Astro and it's a platformer. So you're doing all these different things to, you know, basically reach you know, from start at point A and reach point B um, at the end. But like the things that you do in this are amazing. And the controller, like the reason to get a PlayStation 5 is because of that controller. Like what they're able to do with the DualSense is just phenomenal. <laughs> like it really blows my mind when I'm playing some of these games. And this is the best example of that controller just being amazing. And so, yeah, this game was fantastic. I uh, played, it's not super long or anything, but uh, there's a lot of unlockables. You unlock like the different play consoles, all the accessories. It was just so nostalgic playing through this. I loved it. I mean, this was absolutely a great experience. Uh, I think, you know, short video games are like perfectly fine with me. I love short video games. And so I have no problem with that. Um, the dual sense is remarkable. This game is excellent. If you've been sleeping on this and you have a PS5 because you think, oh, it's a free game, nothing too interesting there. No, it's, it's fantastic. Especially if you are a PlayStation lover, like, you know, I had, I've been a PlayStation guy since the very beginning. I had the original PlayStation and then all the consoles through the years. Now, admittedly, I have become an Xbox guy over the years, but, uh, still this is very nostalgic and I loved it. So Astro's Playroom is going into the great experience. And also there is, I forget the title, Astro's something on the uh, PlayStation 4 that is on PSVR. That one is really cool too. So I definitely recommend, recommend that one also. Okay, so the next one on the list is Black. And this is released by EA. This is a first person shooter that you may or may not have heard of. Um, it was pretty popular when it first came out. I remember I was working at GameStop, I think, at the time when this one came out. And uh, I really liked it when it first released. Like, just how realistic the whole thing felt. Um, I don't know, it was, it was a fun game. And so it's actually a, playable now on backwards co uh, compatibility on the Xbox Series X. And uh, it was on Game Pass. And so I figured, you know what, let's play this one again. And wow, this still holds up remarkably well for a game of its age. I guess I don't know what year it came out. Uh, I would guess like mid to late 2000s though. Um, but the graphics still look really good. At least, you know, the upgrade on the Xbox Series X, they make them look great. You know, frame rate issues I didn't find at all. Uh, it's just a fun FPS. And I'll say right now, like sports games and FPS are kind of my bread and butter. That's what I play the most. Uh, you might not see that in this list this past year, but typically that's what I've uh, historically played the most. Uh, and so this one is really good and it is like genuinely difficult. Um, I was having a hard time and honestly, I, I play games on usually like the lower difficulty or like if there's one between normal and easy, I'll play on that one. Um, and this one was still rather difficult. <laughs> I was kind of surprised, but uh, really like this is a game. If you like FPS games and you don't mind, like obviously there are some uh, kind of uh, whatever that term is, a quality of life adjustments that have been made since Black was released that aren't present here, but still like 
this is a really solid experience. Like I really enjoyed this game. Um, I actually want to go back to it. I didn't end up beating it, but I'm maybe halfway through, maybe a little bit more. Uh, but it's just an awesome uh, first-person shooter. So if you like that genre, definitely check this out. So black is uh, definitely a solid experience for me. Um, and then another one that fits that same bill, Crimson Skies, another uh, original Xbox title that is available at uh, backwards com uh, compatibility. And so I played this one on the Xbox Series X as well. And this is a game where I, when I worked at GameStop, my manager was obsessed with this game. Him and his buddy used to play it all the time. Um, I watched Metal Jesus Rocks here on uh, YouTube. Uh, his buddy, Drunken Master Paul, always uh, talks about this game. Crimson Skies is one of his favorites of all time. And so I'd owned it for quite a while. I actually have it sitting over there in my Xbox collection. But I never ended up getting around to it until it was available on Game Pass. I downloaded it and played it. Now, this is one I've probably played lesser than some of these others but still this was just a really fun game um but i'm just not like the biggest flight fan flight sim fan it's not a flight sim but uh i don't know what to call it i guess just a flight shooter I, I don't know um and so the controls i find are just like difficult to get into typically speaking but with crimson skies i thought it was actually pretty natural and so because of that i thought this one was done pretty well um i was having a little bit of difficulty in some of the opening missions like they were just frustrating me as i was going through i was replaying them um and so this is another one like i probably i would like to get back to it but do i actually see myself coming back to this one probably not um and so uh from, from my experience with it, I will put this one in, oh man, I don't know. I guess I'll go with middle of the road uh, because it's just not one I see myself coming back to. Like I appreciate what it is um, and I think it's probably one of the better of this type of game that I've played, but there's a reason I don't really play these games. And so for my money, I'm putting Crimson Skies in middle of the road. So uh, next up we have Cruisin' Blast. And this one was kind of a surprise uh, for me at least uh, when it came out last year, I wasn't expecting much at all, but the trailer looked really fun. And this one was released on the Nintendo Switch. And uh, I ended up picking it up because it was a, a good price. I, I think I grabbed this one at like Walmart. Um, it was a good price when it came out and it seemed to be kind of difficult to find right when it came out. I don't know if that's still the case today, but uh, I got lucky and was able to find one at a Walmart. And then at Walmart, sometimes they release their games like, I don't know, eight to eight to 10 bucks lesser than some of the main stores, uh, like the other stores like, you know, Best Buy, GameStop, things like that. And I think that was the case here. I want to say this is like a budget title anyway. So I think it was only a $40 release. I feel like I got it for like 32 or 33 bucks. Um, and this one I played nonstop until I beat it. Like it was just awesome. It is so much fun. Um, you know, it is very, I guess you'd call it bare bones just because there's not a ton to do outside of just the races. Uh, but if I'm not mistaken, I feel like they, am I mixing this up? Maybe they are, are adding in online multiplayer via a patch, or maybe they're talking about like a sequel. I don't remember, but um, if you're into that, you know, that could be coming down the road. So something to think about. Do research on that though, because I am uh, I could be making that up. I don't know. I feel like I've heard that somewhere though. Uh, but either way, like the racing is just so much fun. It's a, like arcade racer, uh, harkens back to like the old cruising games. It's awesome. And so for me, this one was just a great experience. Like it was so much fun. Had a blast with it and I'm so glad I played it. So yeah, Cruise and Blast was a great experience. So I may have upset some people with Crimson Skies, putting that a little bit lower on the list, but you just wait until I get to Deathloop. The, I think this was the first PS5 game, I it's the first one I bought, and I think it was the first one I played. I may have played Astros first, but I you know played that one for a little bit and then was going back and forth. Um, but boy, oh boy, Deathloop had so much hype behind it. I watched so many reviews on YouTube of this one and it just looked like my type of game, a first person shooter in this time loop idea. Like it just sounded awesome. I loved the aesthetic of it. I think the graphics are fantastic. Looks amazing on the PlayStation 5. Like everything about this should have been something I really enjoyed, but oh my gosh, this one was just, whoop, this one was such a drag to play to me. Like I was so disappointed by this game. And honestly, this is a me thing. It's not the game. It's just, I did not enjoy this one at all. Like, I don't know, I, can I even like pinpoint what was wrong with it? I don't know, like it was very difficult. I, I'll say that up front. And I know like you can mock me in the comments, that's totally fine. But like, for me, it was more difficult than I was anticipating. Um, and I didn't love like how the story was being told through all of these different like uh, things that you would read on the screen and uh, like things you would have to find in order to get most of the story. Um, I just found it, I don't know, tedious. 
and I wasn't sure where I, what I was doing in some of the time. Like, I did not get far on this, but I played this for a handful of hours. It's just, oh boy, it was a drag every time I thought, man, I really should play that game again. And honestly, like, I'm not selling it. Like, I'll probably come back to it at some point, and maybe I'll, I'll realize the error of my ways. But for me, that one was just a drag. So I know that's going to upset some people because that one is so loved. But yeah, that's just my opinion. I hope you loved it. Uh, my buddy, he ended up uh, buying it as well when it was cheap because this one dropped down to like 30 bucks. Like, you can get it for like 30 right now. So a good price on it if you're intrigued by it. Um, but he liked it when he played it. And so it's, it's just me. It's just me. Um, so next up is Far Cry 6. And I'm actually co-oping this one with my buddy right now. And oh my God, this one was just kind of, it blew me away. Like I'm having so much fun with this game. Um, I'll admit like, the most I've ever played of Far Cry, I think I played like 15 minutes of like Far Cry 2, maybe. Like, that's it. And I've just never been into these games. I couldn't get into them at all. Um, and so when Far Cry 6 came out, it dropped really low in price. And one of my other friends was talking to me about it and saying, like, this is actually a really good game. And so because he was playing it, I needed something new to play on my PlayStation 5. And my buddy was buying it, too. I figured, yeah, let's do it and we'll co-op it. This will be a lot of fun. Um, and so Far Cry 6 was uh, it is awesome. I haven't beat this one yet, but I want to say we're like... I don't know, halfway to two thirds of the way in. And uh, it's just like this gigantic open world. It is massive. Honestly, like it's probably too big because it's bigger than it needs to be. Like there's just so much going on here that I'll never be able to see all of it. But uh, the story is actually really engaging. I love uh, what they're doing with that. It's just, it's fun. Like this is a really good first person shooter, open world adventure. I love that idea. Um, and it's a beautiful game to behold. Oh my God, like on the PS5, this looks fantastic. I'm sure it looks just as good on, on the Xbox Series X, but I played on the PS5 only. But this one was shocking to me because I honestly didn't think I would even enjoy this. But yeah, Far Cry 6 has been, oh man, it's one of my games of the year. Like, I don't know if I can put it as an all-timer quite yet. Um, I want to kind of see it through, but right now it's a great experience. And so I'm putting it in that tier because it has been a blast. Definitely recommend it. Um, and then the next one on the list, also completely out of nowhere to me, another game that I never would have spent a penny on. And so thank God for Xbox Game Pass. Um, this is Flynn, Son of Crimson. And so you probably don't know about this one, but this is a platformer uh, and it is just excellently done. Um, this is one where like, thank goodness, it caters to each individual player. Like this can be as difficult as you want it to be, or it can be as easy as you want it to be. And that just works well for me. Uh, and so like this was one where it was rarely frustrating, which I liked because if I'm frustrated with a game, I'm just going to move on. I have hundreds and hundreds of games down here, access to hundreds of games on Xbox Game Pass and the like. Like if I don't like it, if I'm frustrated, I'm just moving on nowadays. I don't care. Uh, and so this one was rarely that. It was one that I did beat and I just kept wanting to come back to it and pushing through. It was just so much fun. Uh, it is like, I don't know what I would compare it to. Like it's like a Mega Man style uh, platformer but not nearly as difficult as a Mega Man by any stretch, at least the way I played it. I'm sure you could make it that difficult. I don't know. Um, but the graphics on it are beautiful as well. It has this like old school style graphics to it. Um, this one came out of nowhere and I had such a blast with it. So this is another one. I'm putting it in a great experience. Like it was just so much fun. I feel like we have a run just randomly because I'm going in alphabetical order of some of my favorite games of the year because next up is Forza Horizon 5. Now, to be honest, like, the Horizon series is one of my favorite series of all time. It has been excellent since the original Forza Horizon. Uh, and so while Forza Horizon 5, I would admit, is not my favorite of the series, what is, like, I don't know, maybe four probably like I think the last one probably was my favorite but I mean this one is better it's a better game but I still I just had more fun with the last one for whatever reason um, what I loved about Forza Horizon 5 though is one the gore, the graphics I mean they are stunning <laughs> like these next-gen graphics aren't, aren't playing around and they, it looks fantastic but what was also cool was that I had like three other people in my friend group that were also playing it and so we would always be texting each other trying to top them on the daily leaderboard not the daily leaderboard but like the leaderboard that pops up when you open roads, when you, uh, you know, beat a new time at a speed trap or things like that. Um, and so we were constantly texting back and forth and talking about this all the time. And so that part was a good, was a great time. Um, but once I beat it, which like beating it is you, you know, finish the certain race or the certain circuit or whatever. Um, and so I considered it beat at that point. I never went back to it, uh, which with Forza Horizon 4, even after beating it, like I still put in 
probably you know a dozen extra hours after the fact. Um, it was just they're both great games. Don't get me wrong. And Forza Horizon Five is probably like it's a better game. The graphics are better. The load times are amazing on the Series X. And so, yeah, this was like awesome. Definitely a great experience. But for my money, it just misses out on that all timer category. So it's going to go into a great experience. And then speaking of like games that are available day one, new games available day one on the Game Pass, we have Halo Infinite. And this was the one that I was probably anticipating the most. Well, that's not true. Halo or uh, uh, Forza Horizon 5 was probably my number one anticipated game last year, and then Halo Infinite at number two. Um, but this one, like, would not let me stop playing. I was obsessed with this game, and I had a blast. Like, I'm just not even gonna. I'm just gonna do it right now. This is an all timer for me. <laughs> like, I loved this game so much. I was, you know, engaged by the story. I thought it was emotional in the right ways. Um, I didn't find it cheesy, which I thought I might. Um, I don't know. It, this was just like the shooting is so much fun. It just feels so like good, fulfilling. Um, the only thing I'll say is that headshots are better in Far Cry 6 than they are in Halo Infinite. But other than that, I think the shooting is fantastic. All the, you know, the wide array of guns. It's Halo, right? Like, you know Halo if you, if you know video games. Um, and it stays true to that Halo formula. Um, it does have this open world idea to it, which you know, playing that and then going to uh, Far Cry 6, it's like, yeah, Halo Infinite did not have to have this open world idea. It doesn't really do too much with it. Um, I didn't hate it, but man, I spent a lot of time just walking from point A to point B because this place was, you know, you have to, you have to do that or you have to fly there or drive there, whatever the case is. And I just didn't have a vehicle a lot of the time. So I did a lot of walking, but I love like you get these different abilities that you power up throughout the game. And one of them is like a thing that you throw I can't think of the term but like uh you know you a grapple hook that's what it is um and so you can climb buildings a lot quicker and things like that climb these different uh, rock structures these mountains um so I thought that was really cool and really like the story is what kind of you know kept me coming back to this one because I really wanted to know where things would go and I've not beaten a Halo uh campaign since I think it was Halo 3 on the Xbox 360, I think that was the one where my friends and I, uh, you know, were really hyped about it and we ended up buying it and playing it together in co-op. Um, but I don't think I've actually beaten a Halo campaign since then until Halo Infinite. And Halo 3 was so many years ago, like, I don't remember the story at all. Uh, and so, yeah, like, I want to go back and play the original trilogy again. But, yeah, man, this was just fantastic. Like, I'm so, I'm, I was so happy with what they did with this. And, uh, yeah, though it's not, like, perfect, because it doesn't really need that open world setting, I still think it was a lot of fun. Uh, so I loved it. Halo Infinite is definitely an all-timer for me. Um, so from, you know, kind of a new one to a really old one with Joyride Turbo, this is just a kart racer. Well, it's not a kart racer, but it feels like a kart racer. You're actually in regular cars, um, but it's super cartoony graphics. And uh, it is made like you could play this as a young kid and still get a lot out of it. Um, but I had fun with it. Um, this is one where like, yeah, it's you definitely recognize its flaws as you're playing it. But it's fun. Like there's a limited number of courses as well. I want to say there were like six different courses or something like that. Um, but there's quite a few like uh, secret paths you can take in there, which I always enjoy. Um, so this is just kind of one of those that. This is a solid video game for what it is. Um, this is another one that, oh, you know what? I don't remember if this one was on Game Pass. I might have had this one thanks to um, like my gold membership over the years. But uh, either way, like this was a solid game. And if you have access to it like free, like I did, then yeah, I'd probably give it a shot if you like kart racers because that's what this one feels like. Okay, so now we're getting into a couple of sports games here. And the first one on the list is Madden 21. So I love sports games, but I won't spend too much time on these because I know not many people care about the sports titles. But uh, Madden 21 was a blast. This is one I played thanks to EA Play, which is a part of your uh, Xbox Game Pass membership. Um, and so I was, you know, 22 came out obviously last year, but I didn't spend the money on it. And so I just was playing uh, Madden 21. I actually bought this one at the end of last year for like five bucks. And so I do have the physical now. But uh, yeah, this was a great game. I ended up doing like a full kind of like a retro season on this, a retro franchise where I downloaded old school, like 1990, I think it was, rosters. And I put a ton of hours into this and I just had a great time with it. So, I mean, this is definitely like, it's not anything better or worse than the old ones or the new, I haven't played, I guess I did play 22 for like, I don't know, a few hours because you get a 10 hour trial. And so I did play that for a little bit, but it didn't seem that much different to me this time around. So uh, Madden 21 is a solid video game and that's, pretty much all there is to say about that. 
Next up, though, is MLB The Show 21. And just the fact that there is an Xbox Series X version of MLB The Show is just amazing. Finally, they have gone multi-platform with this. Uh, you know, it was a Sony exclusive forever. Uh, and so now it has, you know, if you own an Xbox, you have reason uh, or you have the ability to play this game now. And so thank goodness for that. That's awesome. And because, you know, I of course, I had a PS4, so I could have bought it on there. But obviously, and it was available day one on Game Pass, which was just the, the cherry on top. I didn't expect that at all, but was so happy when it hit. And so this was another one. I put a lot of time into this. I think it was, if I'm not mistaken, on Xbox, I feel like it was my most played game of last year. Now, I didn't end up like beating it because I never ended up going to like the World Series or anything like that, but I did have a franchise going that was a lot of fun. Um, almost like a, not a fantasy because it wasn't a fantasy draft, but not tied to reality at all. <laughs> um, and so, yeah, I was playing through that and it was a good time. I enjoyed it for what it is, but I mean, it's the show. So it hasn't really changed that much over the past few years. So, you know, if you like the show, you're going to like it. And the graphics do look amazing. That definitely has changed. And so this is one where I would say this is definitely, it's a solid game. You know, I had fun with it, but it's not like anything that, I don't know, it's nothing to write home about, I guess. It's the show. So if you played the show recently over the past, I don't know, five, seven years here, then you've played what there is to have with, uh, you know, you know what there is, what you're going to get with the show 21. So uh, next up is Peggle, which is actually a game that I beat years ago. On, I want to say I beat it on my phone, like because it was a you know an old iPhone app. Um, but this one is on Xbox Live Arcade. This is one that again I own thanks to I either bought it or it was on um, Xbox Gold uh, years ago. And uh, I really like this game. This is just a simple puzzler where you're trying to you know eliminate all the specific uh, little pegs that are on the screen. You have a certain amount of shots that you get with each ball, and you're trying to you know get rid of all the pegs um there are each different level has different like abilities that you have you can mess with things like that and so this is just a fun game like i was playing this right, right before i went to bed at night kind of just a random download but i i always have a good game with us like this is definitely another solid video game um you know nothing that is going to change your uh, change your world or anything but it's fun if you're looking for just a simple puzzle game so i had a blast with that one and i think it's a solid game another big game that released last year was psychonauts 2 and you can see that's the next one up on my list here so another one thanks to game pass i played this one um and this one was pretty good it has like really good graphics i think that art style is really fun to play um but the gameplay itself i don't know what it was but it just didn't didn't grab me for whatever reason um it's not for Forgettable though, like for, for me, I'm putting it middle of the road just because I don't feel the need to come back to this. I didn't beat it. I played it for maybe, I don't even know, three, four hours, whatever it was. Um, and I get the idea. Like I understand what they're doing. Uh, there's definitely a message that they have with this one about like dealing with depression and mental health and things like that. And that's awesome. Um, but just in terms of the gameplay, for whatever reason, it didn't grab me. And so for my money, I'm putting that one in the middle of the road, but I know that one is another like favorite. People love that game. And so I, you know, I hope if you played it, you had a better experience than with it than I did. But next up on the list here is Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart. And this is my goatee. Like this is a phenomenal video game. Let me just put it up where it belongs in an all timer. Uh, so this is one that I was not going to buy because I just have never played the uh, Ratchet and Clank games. I think I played the one on PS4. I think it was the one that they made the, the movie out of. Um, and I didn't like it. I, I think it was even only the demo or something. Like I played very little of it and I just did not get into it at all. Um, and so I was not into this. My buddy is huge Ratchet and Clank fan. He kept talking about it. And one day when I was at Disc Replay, they had it used and I was, I knew my PS5 was coming within the next month. And so I grabbed it actually before I even had my PS5, which I totally just remembered that. Um, so I guess, uh, Deathloop was my second game purchased, but, um, anyway, RNC, uh, was, like so much better than I had like any expectations of um, right from the beginning. Like it's like you're playing a every, like everyone has said, it feels like you're playing a Pixar movie. Um, the graphics were just mind blowing. <laughs> like they looked beautiful uh, for my money. I prefer this art style over Psychonauts 2, but I understand that like it's comparing apples and oranges really because 
they're just doing different things, right? They're, they're going for different styles. But uh, for what I prefer, Ratchet & Clank was just beautiful to look at. The gameplay on this is just absolutely fulfilling. Like, uh, it is so rewarding with, like, the double jumps, how you move from, like, like spot to spot. There's these, like, uh, portals, basically, that you can uh, trans transport to. Uh, I don't know. It's just one of those games where, like, it feels fluid. Um, and the shooting is so much fun. All these different guns that you can uh, collect throughout the game and uh, that, you know, you upgrade them as you go too. like, this is just, I, I realized after playing this one that like that open world kind of sandbox style, not necessarily sandbox, but that open world style where you have a character that you're upgrading, weapons that you're upgrading, uh, you know, there's shooting involved, like uh, there is platforming involved, which is this heavy platforming. I love those games because Ratchet and Clank, one of my all-time favorite games now, I think of something like um, uh, Infamous, another one of my all-time favorites. I love that game. Um, Sunset Overdrive, which is a super underrated game for the Xbox One, one of the uh, first um, exclusives for the Xbox One. That one I actually started playing and I wasn't getting into it, so I stopped. But then like a year or two later, I went back to it and was just utterly obsessed. Like that style of game is what I love most. And so that's why I'm really excited to play Spider-Man, which I still haven't started yet. So I got to do that this year. But uh, that's one of the main reasons I'm excited about that is because it's going to be that same style of game. And so, oh man, Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart is without a doubt my game of the year. It was just so much better than I had any uh, expectation of. Like I absolutely loved it. So uh, if you haven't played it, you absolutely earn it, uh, owe it to yourself because it is phenomenal. So definitely my goatee. So the next cover shown there is the Spyro Reignited collection, but specifically I will be talking uh, Spyro 2. So the original Spyro I beat in 2020, I guess it was. Um, but last year I ended up playing Spyro 2. Now this one I played a lot of, but I don't think I actually got to the end of this game. I think I'm pretty close, but I never went back to it. Um, but for whatever reason, like Spyro 2 just didn't quite connect with me as much as the first one did. I liked the first one better. Um, and I think I ended up getting stuck at one mission where like you had to keep running around this certain area. You had to get all past all these spots and then crash into something. And it was just so frustrating. Like I just ended up stopped playing that one. And so for me, like this is definitely Spyro's great. Like this is definitely a solid game. Um, but it, it all, I almost feel like I should put it middle of the road just because I don't really see myself going back to it anytime soon. Um, but maybe I will because I do want to play the third one in that trilogy, which I haven't uh, touched at all yet. So I don't know. So I'm going to put it in solid. I think that's a good place for it. It feels right to me. So I'm going to put Spyro 2 in solid. And then we have another uh, sports game here. And actually the last three are all sports games. So uh, the first one though is a little unique one because this is Super Mega Baseball 2. And this is another one I played thanks to uh, Game Pass on the Xbox. And uh, this one is great because there's just so much customization. Like I know uh, some people I follow online on Twitter, they are all about making all of the real MLB teams because this is a non-licensed game. Um, and the, the art style on this is super cartoony. So it's not realistic in that sense. But what's really cool is that you can make the game be realistic if you want, and you can make it as hard or as easy as you want. There's actually a difficulty like slider that goes from like, I think zero to a hundred or something like that. Um, and you can make it wherever you want on there and it'll feel different when you play the games. Um, and this is one where I did win. I think it was, I don't know if it was like a season, I guess it was a season and I ended up in first place and I just had a blast with it. Um, the games are quick. Like I think I was playing shorter innings, like maybe five inning games or something. Um, but they're quick games and you don't, it's not super realistic, like I said, but at least the way I was playing it. Uh, and the, the art style is so much fun. This is just a really solid, independent uh, sports video game. So if you like baseball games and haven't tried Super Mega Baseball, I definitely recommend it. I'm putting this one as another solid experience for me because I, I had a blast with it. I thought it was really good. So the last two on my list here, we have UFC 3 and UFC 4, which it might be weird to you, so let me explain that. So UFC 3, I downloaded because I knew it was part of EA Play. I didn't realize that e, uh, UFC 4 was also available um, at the time when I was playing UFC 3. So I started playing UFC 3, and I put actually a lot of time into that, and I had a, a lot of fun with it. Like, that's another one. I'm putting it as a solid experience. Like, it's not great, and I, I did lower the difficulty just to have fun. I just wanted to win some matches and move on. Um, but I think I had a, uh, a female character in that one that I was kind of building up through the ranks, and I 
had a really good time with it. I thought it was uh, just a fun UFC mixed martial arts game. Um, but then I started doing UFC 4 after I was figured, you know, I'm, I'm kind of over UFC 3. I feel like there was something, uh, some match that I wasn't winning. I just getting like destroyed on it. So I just say, yeah, let's, let's check the next one out after I realized that was available. And so I picked up UFC 4 and for my money, this is going to be the first and only one, I guess, in Forgettable. Uh, I don't know what it was, but I guess... Maybe UFC 3 felt a little more arcade, whereas UFC 4 felt more simulation. And I guess when it comes to uh, fighting games like this, I just want a more arcade feel. I want it to be fun. I don't necessarily need it to be realistic. So yeah, for my money, UFC 3 was solid, while UFC 4 was a little bit forgettable. Uh, unfortunately, you see there are no wrestling games on this list this year, but hopefully uh, that will change when I do this next year. But we'll see what uh, WWE 2K22 has in store for us. Okay, so there it is, the final tier list for my 2021 played games. And I think this is a good, like, this is how it should be, right? Like, everything you play shouldn't be the greatest, but everything you play shouldn't be the worst either. And so, if you look, like, I played nothing that I thought was terrible last year. Uh, Deathloop was probably my least favorite of what I ended up playing. But, yeah, good mix in the middle there, which is exactly what I like to see, that little bell curve, which is awesome. So, yeah, really good year of video games. I had a ton of fun with the things I played last year, which is really all that matters. Uh, you know, whether I beat games or not means nothing to me. All that matters is that I'm having fun with video games. And I was, as you can see, you know, the vast majority, what is this, like, all but four of them are above middle of the road so that's a really good year in gaming but anyway guys i hope you enjoyed this one a little bit different than normal but hopefully you know it was something you like to watch and so let me know your thoughts down in the comments below tell me what you ended up playing last year uh, and if i've gotten any of these wrong i would love to hear about that as well um, but yeah and let me know if based on this if you have any recommendations for other games that i should be checking out whether they're on game pass or otherwise i always appreciate your guys's recommendations but with that said guys that's going to do it for today so if you did enjoy Enjoy this video please give this one a like down below that really does help me out and like I always say I don't just talk video games I talk all things media be it books movies video games graphic novels manga collectibles if it's media related I'm interested in it and if you are too you might consider subscribing all right guys so that's gonna do it for today I just want to say thank you all so much for watching and I want to encourage you to consume some media today I'll catch you next time <laughs>